Hi everyone, welcome to today's video. So in this video, we're going to show you how to calculate overtime and undertime in MS Excel. So of course, if you want to do that, you have uh, to have, of course, two columns wherein you have the actual uh, time out, the time that the employee or the person actually left the office or logged out using your timekeeping system. And of course, you need a column that will indicate what is the supposed uh, time out of that person. So here I have everyone uh, logging out at 5 p.m. And here we have the actual time out of that person. Now take note that I also embedded here one that is under time so that it would somehow uh, show us what happens when the time out is actually lower or earlier than the expected time out. Now, again, like what I mentioned in a previous video about calculating time, it's required or it's needed that uh, your time entries contain a date because it's possible that here uh, the person should go out at uh, December 4th of the uh, 5 p.m., but went out of the office on December 5th, okay, the next day. So if you don't indicate the date, then Excel will not consider that 12-12 as the next day. It will just be 12-12 of the same day as that of the 5 p.m. So whenever dealing with time, have to make sure that the date is included because time technically cannot, um, or I mean calculated time cannot really stand on its own. The date has to be included. 6 p.m. should be clear is it 6 p.m. today, 6 p.m. yesterday, or 6 p.m. tomorrow. So putting the date is important. So let's proceed and create the calculation for this one. So I'm going to say that this is the excess time for this person. So it's actually quite simple. When you are dealing with time, you have to simply subtract the higher number, the higher time from the lower time so you have your c2 minus uh, b2 space and then enter and you will get an answer okay in uh, excel it's possible that your excel will show this as a date or whatever format and if that happens you simply have to do what i just did but you have to just click home and then choose general okay or decimal or number so that you get the number format of your answer. However, take note that if you do this in an entry wherein the um, first number is lower than the second number, you will get a negative number as well, or in some cases, you may even get an error. So just be um, conscious about that. Now, of course, we want to get the hour okay of this so we're getting a 0 0.03 but we're going to get the hour version of that so hour of this c2 minus b2 and you will get okay here no hour because this one is less than an hour okay time out but if i go to the other cells you will see that i have here uh, nine hours so this person stepped out of the office nine hours later. So this one, two. So this is 5 p.m., this is 7 p.m., so two hours. And as you could see, we don't have the minutes yet. So for that, we're going to have to update our formula so that it will add the minute okay, of C2 minus B2 as well. But take note that if I get the minute, we have to divide it by 60 because I'm adding it together with time. So I have here minute C2 minus B2, but I have to divide it by 60. And I parenthesized that part of the calculation so that it won't get confused with PEMDAS. So it's my habit to do this. Enter. So now I get 0.73. And if I drag it to the rest, then I now have the complete decimal amount of overtime okay, for these entries. 
just to segue to that minute part, if you intend to get just the minute, you're not, you don't want to convert the difference into decimal, then you simply have to do it again, but you don't have to divide it by 60. For example, here, minute of C2 minus B2, and you will get 44 because that's 44 minutes away okay, from our uh, timeout versus the actual timeout. So now I have this um, hour and uh, minute time. But just to again show you, if you have a lower okay, timeout than the supposed timeout, then you will get an error because you cannot have a negative time for hour and minute. So we will fix our formula then okay so that if ever there's an error then we would swap the calculation so we're simply going to copy okay this one and if we're going to copy just going to say if and then if the timeout c2 in this case is lesser than that of the supposed timeout then comma so what if it's true then if it's true that the actual timeout is lower then we will paste the formula again remember we copied it so we now have if the timeout is earlier then we simply have to swap so it's going to be b2 minus c2 instead because it means that b2 is higher so we'll make it the number at the beginning so b2 minus c2 divided by 60 so almost the same calculation okay as the one over here except that this time it's going to be b2 minus uh, c2 instead so enter so no problem here. If I drag it downwards, then you will see that it's an under time calculated 0.75. Of course, we want to distinguish the under time from overtime. So we're going to create okay, a negative number supposedly out of this. So we're going to uh, update our formula again. Let me just expand this. So this segment of the formula should be negative. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to enclose it inside brackets. And I'm going to put negative here. Okay, at the beginning of that bracketed portion of my formula. So that in case it is uh, earlier, then you get a negative number. So I'm going to put it here. And as you can see, we now have the negative number in case it is indeed an under time. So with this, we now have a number that we can use to find the overtime or the uh, under time if ever. And now that's it for uh, this video. If you have uh, any questions, Feel free to use the comment section and I'll be I'll try to answer as soon as I can. And if also uh, I would appreciate if you can like or subscribe in the channel. It really helps us create more videos for you. But for now, this is it. I'll see you in the next video.